Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, which is um, not a BDSM podcast. That's very important. Uh, this is actually a D&D real play podcast that tells the story of four dads from our world who are transported into the Forgotten Realms and their quest to rescue their lost sons. For those of you who have never played Dungeons and Dragons or listened to a D&D podcast before, here's all you need to know. This is basically an improvised adventure where we, the players, who will be introducing themselves shortly, role play as dad characters. We can basically do anything we want, but the results of our actions are dictated by Anthony, our dungeon master, and the rolls of dice. The standard die used is a 20-sided dice called a d20, and basically the higher we roll, the better the outcome. One being a total failure and 20 being a total success. That being said, my name is Freddie Wong, and I play Glenn Close, who is... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I laugh every time I hear it. <laughs> who is a uh, dad rock cover band dad slash bard. Fun dad fact about Glenn. You might have saw him back in 1997, one of the side stages of Bonnaroo. Him and the Glenn Close trio played uh, one of the side stages on the way to the hot dogs. Oh, over wow. in, over in, yeah, Mary Vick. My name is Matthew Arnold, and I play Daryl Wilson, who's a stay at home sports dad who has now come into his own as a barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little fact about Daryl Wilson is that uh, he would be the head coach of the West Rock Elementary <laughs> Doodlers if it weren't for some jerk named Darnell. Um, whatever. Fuck that guy. <laughs> I'm Will Campos. I'm playing Henry Oak, nature Birkenstock granola dad slash druid. Fun fact about Henry is he rolled in with a big old pack of condoms on this adventure. Not for the reason you might think, but because <laughs> condoms in an emergency situation can be used to store up to 10 gallons of water a piece. Survival. So, basics. Uh, Henry might find good use for those condoms on the course of this adventure. Here's hoping. <laughs> if not in one way, then another. <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm Beth May, and I play Ron Stampler, uh, emotionally restrained stepfather and <laughs> rogue. Uh, fun fact about Ron, never took a sex ed class, doesn't know <laughs> how to be a father, either from an emotional supportive standpoint or a physical <laughs> standpoint. No clue, but he's a stepdad. I'm a stepdad, so... Uh, I'm Anthony Birch. I'm the the, the DM. Ooh, I guess, I guess that stands for Daddy Master in this yeah. game. <laughs> you're, like, you're like our dad. You're the dad of dads. I'm the dad of dads. I'm Daddy Daddy. The double dad. <laughs> the DD, the Daddy Dad. <laughs> Let's get right into it. This is episode one, A Man and His Handshake. So today is the day of the regional Pee Wee League soccer game, and we are about to join some dads whose kids go to West Rock Elementary. The West Rock Elementary Doodlers are one of the strongest soccer teams in the region, and they are going to be highly favored in today's competition. We're going to start with one of the dads waiting for the van, the carpool, to come and pick him up for the regional soccer tournament. Glenn Close and his son, Nicholas, are standing out on the street waiting for the van to come and pick them up for the, uh, the soccer game. Can you roll perception with disadvantage? So roll twice and take the worst. That's a 10 and a 4, so a 4. Okay, cool. So everything seems fine and normal to you. Daryl Wilson drives up in his van. Next to him, his son, Grant, is playing Fortnite on his phone. What, what, are, what are you doing? So I feel like I'm just like kicked back in the grass and like my kid might be like standing around, maybe impatient. Nick is standing around impatient. I'm definitely just like leaning back like, yo, man, okay, be so, play cool, dog. So yeah, Glenn is leaning back. And when you drive up, you see that Glenn's kid is definitely smoking a blunt. <laughs> <laughs> you excited about that uh, game there, Grant? And uh, oh, wh what, what? One second. What the? Hey, Grant, uh, turn away there for a second. <laughs> I wrote down the he, window. He continues to keep <laughs> looking at his phone. Nothing changes. Good, Grant. Keep doing that. <clears throat> hey, uh, Glenn. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? Are you uh, are you my ride? Uh, yeah. Uh, can, can you come here? Can we talk for a second? Uh, we'll be right with you, young man. Can you get over here? I mean, where, do you mean like close to the car? Oh, okay, the car. all right. Uh, sure. Car. Okay, so I'll, I'll walk around somewhat blindly around on the I driver's side. I hate to embarrass side. you in front of my boy here, uh, but uh, 
I think your kid is uh, smoking, you know, right there on the grass right now. <laughs> Rock as and you, roll, man. As you turn to see him, your, your son just like goes, hey, and like waves at you <laughs> and continues smoking. No shame, no embarrassment. <laughs> Oh, rock on, man. I, I you know, I think uh, I expected him Glenn, to get into that a little bit. You can't let your kid walk over bit. you, man. You got to go tell him to put that thing out. I ain't having that in my car. Oh. My boy Grant's right here. He might see it. Oh, hey, Grant. Uh. <laughs> it's a noncommittal grunt. He just, he just makes a noise. He's he's dropping. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, you no smoking in your car. I dig that. All right, man. Your car, your rules. I walk over and I uh, go over to uh, my boy and I uh, so try to persuade him to let it. Let me take a hit before we stamp it out. Okay, he's, oh yeah, no problem. Bops and hands it to you. Oh uh, hell yeah! On the on a scale of like one to twenty, what kind of dankness are we looking at here? Weed wise? Can you roll for dankness? <laughs> yeah, twenty. That's this a is natural, the dankest shit. That's a natural. That's a natural twenty. Natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's the, literally the dankest weed that you've ever had <laughs> in your life, and your son seems to be taking it like it's not a big deal, and it fucking throws you for a loop. Uh, hey man, where did you uh, where did you get that from? You, Dad. Ah, uh, <coughs> sorry from you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke does weird stuff to my vocal cords. <laughs> you just uh, seem so happy and you seem so cool when you do it that I figured I would try it. And you're, it feels great. Yeah, I'm very right. hungry and I kind of want to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man, I dig it. Well, uh, you know, I'm just telling you, this uh, Poindexter driving the car over here doesn't want you. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, we getting, we going, boys? Oh, he uh, sounds like a fucking narc. Uh, yeah, he is, man. Why don't you, uh, you know what? I'm just going to take that. Uh, let's just put it in the mailbox here <laughs> for uh, for us. It'll be our little secret. How's that? All right. It'll be like a little present for ourselves when we get back. All right. Okay. Yeah, I dig it. All right. He opens the mailbox and shoves it in and then closes it and puts the flag down. He's like, we don't want a mailman finding that. <laughs> <laughs> I hold out my hand for a fist bump. He goes for it. Nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm fucking bonding with my what? kid already, guys. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Hot great. Is this a real quick? <laughs> <laughs> Is this what fucking being a parent is like? Because fucking sign me up. This sounds great. Oh, my God. All right, I think we, we board the van. Yep, you were, you board the van. Hey, Glenn, I, I hope you realize I, I ain't no narc. I, I party occasionally, too. It's just, you know, in front of the kids. <laughs> Maybe someday we could, you know. Anyways, <laughs> nice to have you board. I, don't, I just don't want you to think I'm like, I've already know, reclined my seat. All right, let's just get this baby going then. <laughs> Grant just turns and just makes, like, dead eye contact with you as he's saying, like, I'm cool. I'm not a narc or whatever. <laughs> And like his gaze tells you everything you need to know about how true that is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we will cut to the street outside of Henry Oak's house. So why don't you describe what kind of neighborhood Henry Oak might live in? Uh, Henry lives in like, you know, a, a nice little suburb. Kind of probably like, I, I don't know San Dimas that well, but like if there's a Silver Lake in San Dimas, he lives where Henry lives uh, with his wife, who's a classical music DJ. They have like a, you know, their house is full of books and there's like, you know, like a nice big tree out front. He's got a coexist bumper sticker on his car, <laughs> a Subaru, which is parked in the parking lot. And there is a uh, welcome mat out front that says, like, good vibes, come on in. <laughs> that's, okay. a, that's a biodiesel Subaru, too, I bet. Biodiesel, yeah, corn oil, yeah. ethanol Subaru. 100%. Okay, so when uh, the minivan, or sorry, the van, is a van, right? That's not a minivan. That no, is a honestly. minivan. It's it a is, minivan. Really? Yeah. It's very yeah. large for a minivan. You have not spent a lot of time around real vans, my friend. Apparently not. When the Honda Odyssey minivan approaches, you see two small children near uh, a tree on a very well-kept lawn, and the kids are just punching the tree as hard as they can and just going, yes, 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 power, power, power. Um, what, what is their dad doing? Uh, I'm clapping for the kids. I'm saying, that's great, kids. Work up that energy. This is a really good way to empower your spirit. If you could just be a little bit more respectful of the tree is my only concern. We're supposed to be doing our power cleansing energy ritual to the air, to the open air, which can receive our positive spirits. Sparrow immediately starts like stripping bark off of the tree with his nails that are like getting bloody and just Sparrow. being like, I will make you a naked tree, a naked tree that I will then punch. Sparrow, how would you like it if someone ripped off your skin without consent? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he just he just ignores you, just goes, power, and just continues to punch the tree. Okay, boys, it looks like our ride is here. It seems like the other adults have come in their uh, low-mileage van uh, that's not great for the earth, but, uh, you know, I guess we're carpooling, so it's okay. Come on, kids, let's go. So they will basically continue to ignore you unless you're like, are you going to like physically, like, how are you, you going to get him in the van? Um, okay. Uh, 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 Lark, Sparrow, I'm going to need you guys to be to be real buddies and, uh, and, and listen to dad now, all right? 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Uh, power. <laughs> and then they start. They turn to each other and they go dual mode. <laughs> <laughs> and they now start exchanging punches directly into each other's chests, like one after the other. Blow okay, for blow. okay, 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 uh, kids. Let's 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 focus that energy over here towards Dad. Okay, let's um let's all let's see who your can... sons immediately punch you okay, in the chest. That's not exactly what I meant, but maybe <laughs> let's all see who can run to the car the fastest. Hmm. Challenge accepted, father. And they start sprinting <laughs> as fast as they can, but they they don't break at all. They just like run full speed into the side of the minivan. Just <laughs> poof, both Whoa, of them. Oh, hey there, boys. Hey, you must be Henry. How's it going? My name's Daryl. Daryl Wilson. Hey, hey, Henry. It's a uh, wait. Sorry. You guys don't have to actually physically shake hands in real life. <laughs> hey, hey there. Glenn. <laughs> just about being polite. Just giving a man a handshake. You can tell a lot by a man from a handshake. Hi there, Daryl. Uh, these are my two beautiful boys, Lark and Sparrow. Sorry, I misheard that. What were their names again? Lark <laughs> and Sparrow. That's uh, Lark Oak and Sparrow Oak. And uh, we're we're so excited for the game today. You know, my kid Sparrow drew the doodler, so we're really pumped to see these new uniforms. Aren't he was they born smoke? from my brain. That's right, Sparrow. All right. He is my seed. All those all those art lessons at the Montessori uh, preschool you went to really paid off. Um, <laughs> hey, Glenn, take a look at this guy. Am I right? Huh? What? Uh, no, I, I, I'm a little <laughs> bit hazed out from the strength of the previous now, aforementioned Now, blood. boys, and then I, I grab both my boys by their hands. Mm -hmm. and say, Before we get in, what are we going to do when we get in the car? Uh... Fight! No, we're gonna I like be your boys. We're gonna be very respectful, and we're gonna be very positive, and then we're gonna go out and we're gonna have a wonderful time today. Can you say that? Can you say we're gonna go out and have a wonderful time today? I have the time today. Okay, close enough. Come on in, guys. <laughs> They go in and they uh, immediately start thumb wrestling and sort of having a whole like they're roughhousing. Hey, uh, Henry, kids, uh. Kids are pretty pretty rambunctious there, man. Oh, they're just free-spirited. They take after me. You know, I was sort of a wild child in my youth. Yeah, what was the craziest <laughs> thing you've ever done? Oh, this one time, my parents wanted me to come home by 8 o'clock, and uh, me and a couple other boys were out having fun, so we stayed out all the way to 9.30. Huh. I burned down my first school. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't burn down the entire school. <laughs> the fire damage was limited to one or two classrooms. I'll do better next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Who wants grape nuts? I've got a baggie of grape no nuts one. with me. Well, I'm going to be snacking on my grape nuts, and uh, I, if anyone wants some, just let me know if you want some of these nuts, and we'll uh, we'll chow down. Is everybody buckled up? Are you boys buckled up back there? Boy, oh boy, are we ever. All right. If you look, they are super <laughs> not. Uh, hey, Henry, uh, I don't mean to... Don't mean to call your kids a liar, but uh, if you could get them to oh, buckle they'll, up, we they'll can start buckle the... up. They'll, they'll buckle oh. up once the, once we get started. Relationships are built on trust. That's what you tell me. You should trust that we're going to buckle up. You know, I'm trying to let them make their own decisions, so I, you know, I, I, it's, it's called free-range parenting. <laughs> I stare at the mirror for a very long time, and then finally I just start driving without <laughs> saying a word. <laughs> okay, so we got to outside Ron Stampler's house. What does Ron Stampler's neighborhood look like? Um, there are several houses on either side of the street. You know what? Forget I asked. So what is, <laughs> <laughs> what, what is Ron Stampler doing with Terry Jr.? Ter oh, Terry Jr. Um, Your stepson. Yeah. Um, I am preparing, uh, Terry some instant oatmeal as requested. I, uh... Actually, my wife, Samantha, has just informed me that I need water in the... Oat. I can't just <laughs> pour the packet in the bowl. Um, kind of a little bit uh, getting into the nitty-gritty there. Don't need that extra sort of, you know, flourish, but I'll do it because I love my my stepson, T Terry Jr. Uh, roll uh, perception. That is a five. Okay, so he... Has not been around for at least an hour. <laughs> um, well, I guess somebody's not getting their instant oatmeal. <laughs> hey, uh, Tim, Tim uh, Terry, Terry, <laughs> where are you at, bud? So you hear outside a telltale like sigh of just like utter exasperation with your bullshit. Uh, you just hear like, Ugh! Daddy? <laughs> I mean, Terry? Is that you? It sounded pretty far away. You might want to open the door and check. Listen, pal, I know that 
I haven't been there for you because <laughs> I wasn't married to your wife. I mean, to your uh, your mom before your dad died. I've written several letters trying to emote on paper <laughs> what I can't always do in person. And you know, I'm working on that. So, so the Honda Odyssey drives up and you just see a lone kid standing on the sidewalk <laughs> with his bags just looking very upset. And you can like very distantly hear from inside the house like, Mom, dad, dad, dad. <laughs> Hey, Terry. Oh, man, this guy's a hell of a center field. Grant, you could learn from him. Come on, Terry, get going. Let's get in here. All right. Yep. Hey, where's, uh, where's nope. your pa? Uh, he's not coming. We're just going to go right now. Let's oh, go. Yeah, do that, buddy. It, Terry, Run. Terry. I was informed to tell you not to get in vans with strangers. Oh, hey, Ron. I ain't no stranger. You're Daryl Wilson. We know each other. Oh. Hey, da Daryl. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yep. That's me, Daryl. Literally just told you his name. You almost said Dan. <laughs> Typical fucking Ron Stampley move. I will go in the back. Ron, you should go somewhere no, else. No, sit, sit next to sit next Grant. You could probably pass to him more often. Hey, That uh, sounds dude, great. Boys, I will sit next to Grant. Great, great. Boys, uh, Wait, do you mind so, if your boys sit in the back there? Uh, so, where am I, so where am I sitting? Don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's a... It's kind of cramped in here, fellas. All the fellas, that's okay, huh? That's okay. All guys in here, huh? <laughs> well, just guys hanging out in the van. That's kind of... I mean, I don't think it's weird, but it's just kind of cramped in here. Not much room to Holy be. Holy shit. He's you know, such a I, homophobe. I, I, I think it's really great for men to bond together. And, you know, like, if boys need such positive role models these days, what with all the toxic masculinity out there. I'm Henry, by the way. Anyway, you can scooch on in here next to me. You want a grape nut? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, is that instant oatmeal without any water in it? You know, that is how I love to eat my oats. Call me crazy, but I call it eating them neat. That's my little joke. I'm a, I'm a teetotaler myself, but like I like to say neat, you know, and it makes me feel neat. Um, is English your native language? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not racist. I have oh the, boy, he is. Let's, um, here's some oatmeal. I, I take the I take a, a, a little handful of oatmeal and I'm like I'm gonna save this for later. You know what this goes great with is grape nuts. Still no idea what <laughs> that is. Let's listen to the radio. Sounds good. Hey Ron and Henry, would you mind uh, sharing a seatbelt? <laughs> I don't want anybody not to be buckled up, and there's not enough for you back there. So no, it's okay. Safety. Is I not know. A no problem. I go ahead and I reach <laughs> the seatbelt around to buckle in with Ron. Fantastic. I right, turn on some kick-ass dad rock, <laughs> Freddie. What is good dad rock? I mean. Hey, Glenn, why don't, you, why don't we play some of your music? You got any CDs or cassette tapes? Actually, uh, my wife, Mercedes Oak Garcia, is going to be, she's on KPSC right now uh, doing the rock block of Bach, if you guys would like to listen to a little Baroque period music. <laughs> hey, uh, Ron, oh what sort of music do you like to listen to? Um, Rufus Wainwright. <laughs> Oh my All God. All right, I'm putting on 60s and 70s greatest hits as we go. And I turn on and it starts playing Led Zeppelin. Okay. You head off toward the regional soccer tournament. You are about an hour away from the site where the uh, regionals will take place. It's been about a two hour drive thus far. And the gas tank just put on its warning light. I feel like Daryl would be the kind of guy who's like, don't worry, I know how much gas my van has. Don't worry about I it. I absolutely know how much gas uh, my van has. You can go an extra 42 miles once that uh, bad boy turns on. <laughs> okay, cool. So the road is getting very, very rocky. You're going up a hill, basically, that you cannot see what's on the other side of it. What is everyone in the car doing right now? Glenn Close is definitely kicked back and uh, uh, taking a nap. Daryl Wilson's driving and he's uh, he's playing Graceland by Paul Simon and Ooh. is trying to explain to <laughs> yes. his kids just why this is real music. Ooh, very good choice. They are playing Fortnite on their phones. <laughs> <laughs> Grant, Grant, where you dropped there, son? Where you dropped there today? Tilted. <laughs> Tilted. <laughs> I told you that's not the best place to drop, son. It's a pretty good place to drop. <laughs> you just don't know how to shoot people, but that's fine. Uh, Ron is subtly looking for a place to maybe vomit in if the road gets any rockier. <laughs> yeah, why is it so rocky all of a sudden? I thought this is a regional soccer final. The road closed or something? We're taking a detour? I uh, don't want to say that Daryl is a bad driver who doesn't know where he's going. I don't want to say that. <laughs> uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Mr. Driver, sir. Daryl, uh, hi. Uh, hi, it's uh, it's me, Henry. Here, wait, I know your name, Henry. Don't worry about it. Wait, How's it going, wait buddy? here in the way back seats uh, with my two boys, Lark and Sparrow. I was wondering if you had any Band-Aids up there. Uh, well, Lark and Sparrow have uh, been uh, goofing around. I've been trying to keep these two knuckleheads under control, and I think we've got a bit of a boo-boo situation out here. Grant, give them some Band-Aids from that survival pack right there underneath your seat. 
<sighs> he does it without hesitation. Thank, don't even look. Thank you, Grant. Say thank you to Grant, boys. They, they don't say thank you to Grant. <laughs> they're, they're, they're shouting at each other. It's a construct. Okay, now hold still and let me put the and let me put these band-aids on. Just 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 hold still, okay? Hold still. Hey, Will, question. You're really not your uh, your guy's not gonna do a little uh, uh, uh neosporin or something first? Oh, you know, shoot, that's right. Thank you for reminding me, uh, Glenn Close. Uh, I, um, I've i got some iodine here in my pocket. Oh, my so, God. Uh, hold still, Lark. I'm going to try to apply this iodine without spilling it all over uh, Mr. Wilson's wonderful backseat. Roll, roll dexterity. <laughs> Nine. All right, you uh, miss with the iodine. <laughs> the <laughs> bottle spills all over the backseat of, of the Odyssey. Oh, my God. Oh, I think I'm going to throw up. It's, 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 iodine has a very iodine. distinct smell. Uh, Oh, yeah. geez. Oh, oh, geez. Oh, geez. Oh, I'm, I, I'm so sorry, Daryl. I, I can't even respond to him. Daryl Daryl just keeps driving. He turns up the volume of, of Graceland. And from the back, I notice his knuckles white <laughs> as they grip the steering yes. wheel. Lark and Sparrow are almost excited to basically have you be more upset at yourself than you are at them. So they just continue to roughhouse even harder. Just uh, just be a little bit more quiet, boys, okay? <laughs> they they do not change their volume one decibel. Um <laughs> Okay, so as you uh, approach the apex of this hill, and as the road gets rockier and rockier, which you especially find strange, uh, Daryl, because on the it's a road, it's a it's a road, <laughs> and you map quest this like any good dad. Yep. You did you do not have a GPS, you just sort of printed it out. I'm assuming. Holy from, like, shit! I definitely have. Uh, map? Not only do I have my phone, but I have a GPS in the car as well. Oh, okay, okay. Like I one bought of those old one of school the, Garmin yeah, GPS. Garmin GPS. Oh hell yeah! Okay, yeah. nice. The old Garmin GPS says that there should be a road here, but you're just seeing that there isn't one. Huh. Hey, Grant, can you uh, pause that game there for a second? Check out the good old Google Maps there. It's multiplayer. I can't pause. I've told you this so many times. <laughs> All right. Just uh, be good. Uh, anybody, if anybody could help out old Daryl here, uh, this road. I want to do a looking... geology check. Sure. <laughs> to see if I can see any, suss out anything from the rock formation. Sure, sure. So what uh, what stat do you think you would use for I was that? just going to roll a d20 and hope for the best. <laughs> I sure. guess that would be... Uh, Investigation, maybe? Wisdom. Let's do investigation. Investigation's good. Uh, can I get like a bonus or something since this is my literal career is being a ge I, hanging out in a geology museum? <laughs> yes, like you a will have advantage. So roll twice and take the better of the two okay. rolls. Okay. 19. Opa. 14. I'm going to take that 19. All right, you got it. So you learn that uh, this does not make sense. What you saw behind you was paved road and then very suddenly and abruptly it turned into stone. And not in the sense of like they stopped paving because there would be a fall off period. There'd be like a fade to like rock. This rock, A, just came seemingly out of nowhere and B, isn't something that you recognize uh, as, as somebody who knows all the rock. You know all the rocks. You know the best <laughs> rocks and this, you've never seen these rocks before. The only person who knows more rock is Glenn. That's true. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, I'd like to talk about the rocks for a second. Uh, I, 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 I can't help but do you remember that scene in Jurassic Park where Ellie Sattler, the very attractive Laura Dern, is uh, looking at the leaves and she notices that the leaves are different and that's kind of the first Daryl Wilson's that, turning up the volume. Something, of <laughs> that something strange is going on. I, I can't help but notice that these rock formations are quite unusual. I really think we should pull over. As you say that, you reach the apex of the hill and as the car sort of goes over it, you see that basically in front of you where there should be more rock, more road, anything. There is instead a very large, very purple, very swirling vortex. And it begins to suck on the car. And you feel the car being... <laughs> Interesting uh, way of putting it. <laughs> it begins to, like, vacuum in the car, essentially. Oh, mighty! I slam on the brakes. Uh, uh, they, they stop, but the car keeps skidding toward it, keeps skidding toward it. Does everybody have their seatbelts on? If not... I definitely do not. Daryl Wilson definitely asked everybody to have their seatbelts. And I definitely not they did, did not. I, I do not because I was dabbing up the iodine in the back seat. Because <laughs> you were dabbing. You oh. were Fortnite I dabbing. Was, I was dabbing on him. I make the sign of the cross. Daryl! I mean, Daryl, that's my own name. <laughs> Grant, Grant! You bring Grant, yourself. Grant, call your call your mom, Grant. Something's happening, Grant. Call your mom. <laughs> he he's, he goes, uh, I got a, I got a victory royale. Hell yeah. <laughs> Grant! Um, Can I roll to throw up? Roll, roll constitution. 18. You, Plus two. You managed to keep it down. I do. And as you're feeling very proud of yourself for managing to, to stomach that vomit, and as Glenn Close looks into the heart of the vortex and thinks that perhaps he has taken one A too little many, bit too many. Too many of his drugs. The Honda Odyssey is sucked in, and very suddenly everything goes purple. Not black, purple. <laughs> okay. Every single sense that you have is overtaken. You feel with more certainty that gravity exists, that up is up and down is down, that you have not been a good father to your child. Daryl Wilson takes his sunglasses that are on the top of his baseball cap 
and put them over his eyes so nobody can see him crying because <laughs> he is absolutely weeping. Ron remains unchanged. He already was certain of this information. <laughs> uh, you hear a screaming. You hear a scuffle. You hear dragging feet. And then ever, suddenly everything goes dark. And then there is the sound of scratching. And slowly, each of you begin to wake up to find several things. A, you are wounded mm -hmm. if you did not have your seatbelt on. Oh, boy. You take a D6 of damage if you didn't have your seatbelt on. Daryl Wilson's rolling his eyes right now. <laughs> That's a one damage. All right. One damage. Nice. Two, the van is nowhere near the last place you saw it. And three... All of your children are gone. Are we in the van? Yes, you are still in the okay. van. You are still, everything's as it was, except for the fact that the car seems to have sustained weirdly no damage, but the doors are wide open. The side door is wide open. Your kids are gone. There doesn't seem to be any sign. Roll call. Daryl Wilson here, roll call. Uh, Henry Oak sounding off from the back, Daryl. Don't care about Henry. Anybody else? Roll call, Grant. <laughs> roll call, kids, Grant. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, is Terry Terry's here? Terry's no, no, Terry is not here. <laughs> I thought that Terry was here, but Terry is not here. I don't want to be a bother, but uh, my sons are also missing. Oh my god, oh lord. I looked to the right where my son was. Grant. Oh shit. Oh, uh, he's probably just around here somewhere, man. He's such a free spirit. We should get out of this uh, get out of this car and look for him, guys. I put the child safety locks on. Everybody stop for a second. Everybody stop for a second. No. Uh, point of order, you can't do that in the 2013 Honda Odyssey. I should know as I own one. I modify my... <laughs> oh, modifications. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Black market modifications. Can, can I do investigation check of what's outside? Yes. It's a 14. Okay. So you can tell almost immediately that something is very wrong. Not just the fact that, you know, your kids are gone, but the sun is not in the right position from where you just were. When you were driving, it was about to become noon, and now it looks more like it's almost sunset. The trees around you are not trees you've ever seen in California before. And um, there's a lot fewer mountains than you thought. You don't, you remember you were right next to a mountain and you don't see the mountain anymore. Guys, it's pretty weird out here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm slowly trying to sort of curtail the excitement I'm feeling and all this <laughs> new discovery stuff though. I'm like, I'm freaked out about my kids, but I'm also like, whoa, this is crazy. Something crazy is going on. So uh, I try to project an air of authority uh, to mask the fact that I'm more excited than I, I care to admit. Roll persuasion. And that's, a, that's on all of us, right? Yeah. That would be a natural one. <laughs> uh, Henry Oak looks more terrified than you have ever seen a human being look. All right, all right, everybody listen up. Uh, it is very important that when we're in a survival situation, we all stay calm. So please stay calm. Please stay calm. Our sons are not dead, probably, although they might be. And there's been many scary rocks and new trees, unlike anything I've ever seen before. <laughs> so um, I, I just think it's really important that we all stay calm. I just wanted to say that again. I'm Henry Oak. It's nice to meet you all, and I'm sorry about the iodine. <laughs> um so can i do a stealth check uh what for i want to grab my secret item from below my <laughs> okay go ahead roll stealth check uh 15 uh all right everybody else roll perception uh 13 one a uh, four all right you managed to access your secret item i grab a secret item and i slowly unwrap the secret item and I chew the secret item very quietly <laughs> <laughs> while trying to contain my, while trying to stay calm and breathe deeply. Is it a Snickers? <sighs> All right, everybody. We lost our kids. I think we should start looking for them, man. That's a good idea. There, I, I, I unbuckle my not buckled seatbelt and I step outside and have a look around. All right. So you see a river headed to what appears to be north for wherever the hell you are. Behind you is basically just a big old plane, uh, a flat plane that doesn't match the hill you just went up, and it doesn't seem like there's really anything of note in that direction. To your left is a forest, and to your right is basically just more of the... It, the, the river just sort of continues onward to the right. Uh, I pull out my phone, and I see if there's any sort of signal whatsoever. There is some signal. You've got one bar, but <laughs> just roll a d20. 17. 17, not bad. Okay, so you've got 25% battery left, which basically Ooh, equates to, let's say, 
15 minutes of time. <laughs> Listen, that, as a rock star that's been on the road before, I know immediately that it's time to put this bad boy in low power mode. <laughs> so <laughs> that right. extends my... It extends uh, it to 30, but you'll be able to do less things. <laughs> <laughs> and also my games will run at lower FPS. Yeah, you're not going to be able to get any fucking Battle Royale wins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if I have a phone, I'm going to go ahead and give a call to like uh, AAA. <laughs> okay. Um, Hello, this is AAA. How may I help you? <laughs> <laughs> is, your, is your car in a safe space? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't... It, hey! You got OnStar in this thing? Afraid is the 2013 Honda Odyssey have OnStar? It would not, no. But he does have a Garmin GPS, doesn't he? I do have a Garmin he? GPS. You know, yeah, we're off. We're, I think we're safe here. We're on the side of the road. Hold on, man. I'm just trying to figure out where we are. Hey, what does the GPS say? The GPS, when you look at it, is frozen on the last spot you were at before you went into the vortex. And it's basically just spinning around over and over like a fucked up compass. It says we're right where we were. I, I relay the last known location and the route that we were driving to AAA. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We will send a technician out there as soon as we can. Make sure to stay within reach of your car, stay on the phone. And uh, yeah, so is it a matter of, did you have a... a what busted tire keys in the car what's the yeah i just think we're a little bit lost and we could just uh use uh use tell them help. about the vortex yeah we drove through this weird um uh, there was a, something in the road see i'm not quite sure if this is a lsd flashback yeah. or if I, so i'm just going to be a little vague N- here, neither is is the the i grabbed I, I grab the phone from him uh, uh rolls uh dexterity just ready to try to fight that's it. A contest. Yes, that's a contest. It's my phone. 12 plus 1. Okay, so 13 versus... 18 plus 321. Okay, so Glenn manages to snatch it out Yo, of here. Yo, bro, bro. Relax, Damn. man. Glenn. <laughs> you, you just yell your own name yeah. when you're excited. <laughs> Daryl. Daryl. <laughs> Glenn, tell them about our kids. Tell them where oh, we're yeah, at. Yeah, tell yeah, them what's yeah. happened. Oh, right. What are you doing? Right. Uh, yeah, and we had some kids with us. They're missing. Sir, if there's an emergency, you need to hang up, dial 911. This sounds prank adjacent so. <laughs> that's what i'm saying i don't trust these people i do hang i do hang up and i dial 911 911 what's your emergency <laughs> <laughs> uh, i relay to him where we are i tell him that the kids are missing and uh, and to the best of my ability where we were and what what happened before uh, before all this went down uh yeah that's uh, just just stay calm stay on the line we will send an officer out to assess the situation all right i hang up don't worry guys cops are on the way where here are, are any of you thinking that we're not that we're non california anymore i you know i i have to say it sounds a little silly but i think given that we seem to have fallen through some sort of space time vortex that i would agree with you daryl uh also uh again i i can't stretch this enough these rocks and trees are very different and very strange and not of any california region that i'm aware of these are not redwoods y'all everyone roll perception 19. Ooh. That, that alcohol helped, apparently. Eight. Two. 24. Ooh. Okay, so um, Glenn and Henry notice that uh, from the forest to your left, uh, a rustle of leaves. Glenn, you seen what I'm seeing? You seen those leaves rustling over there? I think so, but I'm also not sure. I, I, I would like to draw our attention to the rustling leaves uh, that I definitely saw, and I think he also saw, although he may be high. Ah, uh, yeah. As you all are looking in that direction <laughs> with sort of dumb looks on your faces, an arrow comes sailing through the trees at Henry. And what is Son your of a bitch. what is your AC? Uh, oh, 15. Okay, so it lands right at your feet. Oh! You see three men in red cloaks come out of the trees. Uh, one of them is holding a net. One of them is uh, trying to restring an arrow into his bow. And another one has two axes. And he charges you. Uh, so everybody roll initiative real quick. That'll be a, a nine. Two. Okay. Nine. Three. Okay. Guys, which dad do you think has the biggest ding dong? <laughs> <laughs> Stick around long enough, we may find out. Stay tuned, podcast listeners. (laughs) Okay, so the first guy who uh, fucked up his bow attack is going to restring an arrow, take cover behind a tree, and then lean out to try to hit Daryl because he seems to be the alpha male. I was going to say, Daryl is, just because this probably means I'm not well prepared, I definitely do not think these are dangerous soldiers at first or anything. Daryl's like, whoa there, gentlemen, watch where you're shooting that thing. Uh, Oh, nice, okay. That does, woof, that does six damage to you. You gotta be careful. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, so the arrow uh, hits you directly in the shoulder blade. Or not shoulder blade, you'd be facing the wrong direction. Directly in the shoulder. <laughs> okay. Uh, and it's sort of sticking out of you like an Ace Ventura uh, when nature calls. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Good reference. Good reference. I dropped to one knee, uh, and then like my sure. other hand has it, and like my eyes move up, like my eyes look at him, and now they're they're red with rage. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, oh, are you, are you activating your rage? Daryl gets on angry turn, quickly. Can, but, okay, yeah. so the other, uh, the second guy with the, the net is going to attempt to throw it at Ron. He misses horribly. The net just sort of lands limply next to you. This uh, fish cannot be caught. <laughs> <laughs> and then the uh, final guy, the axe guy, is going to run at you full force, Glenn Close. He's going to attack with his axe, and does 16 beat your armor class? Uh, 14 armor class, yeah. So he does three damage. All right. Ah, oh, I definitely am back to sober at this point yeah. because I've been taking he basically damage. He, his axe rather than like cleaving into you like the, the, the flat side of it just smacks you across the face like a Oof. fucking dueling glove. Just pow. And Oof. Your, your, your ears ring and your jaw jangles. Oof. We've all been there. Um, OK, who, uh, who's up now? It is Ron Stampler's turn. I am very suspicious, and I'm wondering if maybe I could call the police and make a difference here. <laughs> do I have do I have a uh, cell power? You do. Uh, you have uh, roll it. Roll a d twenty. Fifteen. All right. You also have twenty five percent power. I'm going to use that to call my stepson. Okay. All right. Interesting. In the middle of battle. Yeah. <laughs> What is it, Ron? Jerry Jr. I'm in the middle of battle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering what I should do. Uh, probably die. Sounds like that's something you would do. <laughs> um. <laughs> no. Jerry. <laughs> I'll call you back. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that definitely did a morale hit too. <laughs> All right. Yikes. Take, All right. Take 1d4 psychic damage. <laughs> two. So take two damage. Seems a little low, but <laughs> <laughs> guys, we need to beat these people or whatever they are for the sake of our, our sons or who they used to be. Um, okay. Next it is Henry Oak. Henry Oak is going to, oh, geez, Louise. Henry Oak is very flustered. He's never been in any kind of combat before. Uh, Henry Oak is really concerned about that arrow wound in Daryl's chest, and Henry still has his iodine on him. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> What's left of it? So Henry's going to try to pour some iodine over that nasty cut okay. and maybe remove that arrow to help uh, Daryl out. Okay, why don't you roll medicine? Medicine? Oh, boy, I'm a trooper at that. I've got a plus three to medicine. I got a seven. <laughs> Let's say uh, you, you definitely sort of hit the general area of the arrow with iodine. Uh, do you try to yank it out? Or are you just trying to disinfect? I definitely try to. Well, I think in the heat of battle, I would be like, I don't want more blood loss, but yeah. I do want to disinfect. Okay, so so you have disinfected it. It's not going to give him any healing benefits, and you also get some in his face, and some in his face just kind of smells funny now. <laughs> it's got that weird stain, that iodine stain. Yeah. <laughs> um, now it is your turn. Uh, okay, Daryl is going to activate uh, Rage. So it says, as a bonus action, I enter Rage for one minute, okay. 10 rounds. I gain advantage on strength checks and saving throws, not attacks, and plus two melee damage with strength weapons. Uh, resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and a bunch of other shit. Okay. Okay. Um, Daryl Wilson is very upset. Daryl Wilson, so to clarify, what are the three people here? Uh, one has an axe, okay. one just threw a net and seems to have nothing else in his hands, and the other one has a bow and arrow and is taking cover in the trees. How far away is that guy who shot me with an arrow? Uh, you could you could run to him. Okay. I stand up and I grab, we're near the minivan, so I could grab my um, toolbox axe, like one of those, sure. like, I like a little hatchet. Those, yeah. what, what do we call those, Freddy? It'd be a hatchet. Yeah. A little hatchet? Okay. I get hatchet. <sighs> you son of a bitch! You son of a bitch, Grant doesn't listen for two seconds. Doesn't listen for two seconds. He would like Grace Lamb if he fucking listened to it. I listen to Magos. I listen to 6XI9I or whatever it is. And Logic doesn't listen to me whatsoever. And I charge the guy and I raise my axe. Wait, up. you generate your rage from the fact that your son doesn't listen to you? Fucking doesn't listen. Daryl doesn't. Holy nobody shit. fucking listens to this goddamn car. <laughs> Don't have their seatbelts on. No wonder they're fucking hurt. And I start charging the guy. Wow. Okay. Uh, do you attack him with your axe? Yes. Okay. So give me a roll. That's a 14 plus. What do I. Doesn't matter. You hit him. Okay. And now then, roll your damage. So it's going to be a hand axe. It's going to be 1d6 plus 3. 
that's going to be a five plus a three. That's an eight. And then I get plus two. So that's a 10. Wow. Okay. So the hatchet goes right into his neck. Uh, it doesn't Ooh. go enough, you know, far enough to feel like, oh, cool, you killed him. But it gets jammed in there and arterial spray oh. begins to mix with the red of his cloak. And you get some blood on you right where the iodine is. And you're just covered in a lot of things right now. I whisper oh. to him as he's bleeding. I go, where's my son? <laughs> is the arrow still in you? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> also, the iodine stings pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel anything but the blinding hate and rage right now. Yeah. And he, the, 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 the red cloak is just like <laughs> when you ask him that question. Uh, and now it is Glenn Close's turn. So Glenn is stumbling back from getting hit by the broadside of an axe. And his first instinct, I think, would be self-defense. So I'm going to run into the van and try and shut the doors. All right. Uh, let's just say you do that because there's nobody usually in a position to stop you. Now, the key's still in here? Yeah, they would be. I think Daryl Wilson was too upset at everybody being gone. I don't think he... Uh, I didn't specifically pull them out, so... Mm -hmm. Okay. Is the car pointed at anybody? Uh, right now, it is pointed 90 degrees uh, from the attackers. So if you wanted to do, you just have to, you'd have to turn 90 degrees to the left, and then it would be pointed at them. I'd like to try and aim the car and run down the closest person who's been attacking us. Okay, that would be net guy. Let's see what's a good stat for using the car. And I do want to point out that I do have a proficiency with land vehicles because I did drive the tour bus for the Glen Close Trio. Okay. So I do know my way around a variety of vehicles and vehicle classes. <laughs> uh, let's say survival is driving the car. Uh, I feel like animal handling. I was going to say animal handling. I just felt it was less likely that you would actually have stats for that. So yeah, we'll do animal handling because I think that's funny. 15 plus one, so 16. Okay. Um, so your car is now successfully, it's, you didn't have time to get it up to super high speed. It's going about 15 miles an hour, and next turn it will hit net guy if he doesn't succeed at a pretty significant uh, uh, <laughs> saving roll. Saving roll. <laughs> All right, so now it's there's got to be a D&D &D first, right? That's got to be the first character to take damage from a Toyota. <laughs> I'm sorry, from a Honda Odyssey, right? Like All right, so he's going to try to dodge. And boy, oh boy, does he not. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do is that getting hit with the car will be a modifier <laughs> based on how fast you were going. And ah, that's okay. how many dice you will roll. Okay. So going at 15 miles an hour is, let's say, 1d8. All right. And every 10 miles above 15 is another d8. Seven. All right. So seven's pretty good. So with a loud and deep whoomp, the red cloak gets smacked by the hood of the car and he is splayed out on top of it almost like he's hugging the hood of the car and as the car continues to drive he gets dragged forward on it uh he's his, his legs aren't aren't touching the ground anymore he's like just completely on the hood of your car so he's also knocked prone which means that you'll have advantage if you try to do melee to him or whatever can i turn on the uh the windshield uh like you know, <laughs> like the wiper fluid can yeah I hit him with no, the wiper it, fluid it's it adds insult to industry and he's nice very to industry and Injury. Is Injury. the wiper fluid iodine? <laughs> 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 All right. The guy with the axe in his neck is going to try to attack Matt. Nope. Uh, so he uh, tries to slash at you with his axe, but it just bounces off of uh, your non-arrow uh, shoulder. It, like he just sort of didn't angle it correctly. And it just he just looks at you and it's the terror of the hatred in your eyes that makes him uh, fail to connect. Nice. Double axe boy is going to attempt to attack... Henry, that is a 16? 16 beats my armor class. Dang it. All right, so he does, ooh, seven damage. Ooh, hey, diddle diddle. So yeah, he, uh, he carves a chunk out of your uh, out of your flank. Ooh. How hurt are you there, Henry? Uh, how do I see my HP? I have, well, I have two HP left. Whoa. So you had 10 overall. Ooh, that stings. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's not, it's not looking great at least on that road. But now it is. Uh, I did the orders wrong last time, so actually it's Freddy, and it is now your turn. So my guy in front of me is hurt and still hanging onto the hood of the car. Mm -hmm. Am I hurtling towards somebody right now? Uh, right now you are just sort of hurtling toward the trees. Um, if you wanted to decide to veer toward the guy that Matt is currently attacking, you could, but you would also basically... Can I Matt. glance at Freddy? Like, can we set up a thing where I throw this guy into his way? <laughs> Uh, well, because he goes first, it would. I, yeah, I guess Freddie could. Yeah. I'm As gonna, a free action, yes. Let's I'm gonna. Go I'm, yes. gonna I'm gonna definitely angle the car because I don't want to slam the car into the tree. So I'm gonna angle the car kind of towards where Matt is, but I'm not gonna aim it at him. So that gives you the idea. I'm, I'm flat. I'm honking the horn. Yeah, because definitely the of, moment I heard my because I called the beast. The moment I heard the beast, 
uh, rev its engine. I definitely looked, and I was very happy to see it take down a guy. <laughs> like also, like I smiled. I was like, Ugh. so you're driving kind of parallel to the tree, exactly. Line. And, okay, and, yeah. And so I, I think the hope here, Matt, is that your guy being thrown into the path of the car will hurt both of them. I assume. Yeah. And so I'm accelerating. I'm so, going faster. So you're basically, well, essentially, mechanically, you're you're holding an action until he throws the dude in, and then you're going to gun it even harder. That's yes, correct. Okay, cool. So now it is your turn, Matt. Okay, I hold the guy and I say, "Sorry for the language." And I, I say, well, <laughs> All right, so do a strength check. Okay. He will contest, but with a disadvantage. I have plus five, so I have 19. Okay, so he fails. So you throw him. Wait, I gain advantage. I just want to double check how strong I was. Um, I rolled the exact same thing, so still a 19. Okay, good. Still very good. <laughs> um, so you throw him directly into the path of the oncoming van. The van accelerates, like you said, when you are now going 25 miles an hour, which means that you hit both of them for 2d8. That's five plus seven. Now do it again. That's seven plus one, eight. Okay, so they are both instantly <laughs> <laughs> turned into a, w what once was two human beings with lives and dreams is now <laughs> two fleshy bags of broken excuses for bones. Uh, in I've never related more. <laughs> <laughs> I give Glenn a thumbs up, like as, like as he's driving past. throw the fucking horns out the window, baby. <laughs> um, do, you, do you like hit the brakes or do you just sort of keep on trucking? To paint a picture, I hit the brakes hard enough for them to slough off. That's exactly what I wanted to know. Do yes, they do a they comedy? They definitely like, slough. Off, off of the front of the car. Mm -hmm. The moment they slough off, like I'm giving them the thumbs up, and the moment I hear that wet just <laughs> meets up, I stare at it, and I don't know how it's going to affect my next thing, but I start, I get ready to vomit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, like instantly. I'm okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm also vomiting in the front seat, just on myself. Uh, uh, it is Henry's turn. So who all is left standing? There's only one guy, the guy who had the net. The guy who had the net. Who now looks terrified <laughs> because you just took some sort of monstrosity made of metal and turned two of his friends into dirt. <laughs> Henry, having seen this crazy display by Daryl, feels something inside him he's never felt before. An ancient elemental power seems to activate within him and his eyes go green and he stretches out his hand and a poison spray blasts forth from his palm. Oh, Whoa. shit. Uh, it's my conjuration cantrip poison spray. Fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and use it. So I extend my hand towards um, the net boy, and he must make a uh, constitution saving throw or take 1d12 poison damage. All right. Boy, he fails. Okay, so he takes d12 of damage. All right. So the spray gets him directly in the mouth as he's oh. opening his mouth to say something. And, and like you see like the acid begin to sort of like eat away. Or it's poison, it's not acid. Poison. Yeah, yeah. so it's poison. It's iodine. It's, it's iodine. <laughs> <laughs> the iodine just like... Your ability to disinfect was inside you all along. <laughs> it just shotgun blasts him in the face, essentially. And he just is racked with confusion and horror. And uh, you see complete panic in his eyes and he begins to turn his feet as if to run. Now it is Ron's turn. Wait, so, so Ron sees uh, Henry just <laughs> explode poison from his fingertips? Yep. How does that feel? Emasculating. <laughs> <laughs> Desperate to join the fray in some sort of violent fray joining thing, I attempt to take the arrow out of Will's shoulder and use it as a weapon of my own. Daryl's shoulder? Uh, Daryl's shoulder. Daryl's shoulder. Okay. <laughs> like, really the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead and roll medicine. 11. Yeah, you yank it out. It's not pretty. It doesn't feel good for you. You have to take a D4 of damage. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. <laughs> D4, that's six. That's, that's not, uh, not possible. possible not possible, D4. my man. <laughs> not the real number. Not possible. That's a four. All right. Oof. You take four. You take way more damage from the arrow coming out than from it coming in. <laughs> But now, look who's the owner of a shiny new bloody arrow that was just a new friend. I've looked away from the gore, and, like, and then Ron pulls the arrow out, and I see like the ligaments, oh. and I just instantly vomit all over my own wound. Oh, God. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, and I Perfect. drop to the floor. <laughs> and you're covered in blood and iodine. Yeah. Okay. That's a typical Friday for Glenn Close, let me tell you. <laughs> all right, so it is the remaining ruffian's turn. And he, having seen <laughs> the series of things you just described, uh, in addition to a car ramming two of his friends, says, God damn it, I knew we shouldn't have come back for the adults. I knew it. And he runs. Oh, shit. 
And now he is still in view. Do something, Daryl says to <laughs> anybody who's listening. Well, so the guy's still running away, right? Yeah. Yeah. So once more, Henry, still horrified by the spray of poison that flung out of his hand, looks up and sees the guy running away and thinks of his two beautiful boys and being <laughs> lost in this scary world. And another veritable nature orgasm shoots through his body and he seizes with green energy and vines shoot from his hands. Gross. I think out of his hands. Um you can from the ground. Uh, no, he slams the ground in rage, and uh, he casts Whoa. Entangle. Ooh, okay, cool. So grasping weeds and vines sprout from the ground in a 20-foot square starting from a point within range. Um, so I'm going to say that I'm trying to... Yeah, you're trying to grab him. Trying that makes to grab sense. him. Must succeed on a strength-saving throw. Oh, okay. Uh, or be restrained by the entangling plants. So he's definitely uh, going to do that with disadvantage. Okay. He does not succeed. So the vines come out from under the ground and encircle each one of his limbs and then at the same exact time just whoop, yank him right down to the ground and leave him completely prone and helpless. The combat is over. You are triumphant. Yeah, we did it, everybody. So what do you do now? We took a, quite a bit of damage. So, where are we at? Real quick, where yeah. are we at? Because I'm at five out of nine. Yeah, everybody's pretty low. I'm at two health. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. And um, also, just as a warning to y'all, the way that D&D works currently in fifth ed is that basically levels one through three are survival horror in terms of how fragile you are. Yeah. Um, and that will less, you'll become the Avengers as time goes on. But yeah, you'll be pretty fragile. Daryl Wilson, uh, I get up and I just with absolutely, my eyes are just dead inside and I walk straight to my minivan. I open up the trunk and I pull out my uh, it's a pale ale uh, six pack and I just start pulling them off and handing them to everybody <laughs> <laughs> you know I haven't said anything I'm just I'm just handing them whether or not they want it and I start walking towards the the guy <laughs> who's tied up in the weeds also pulling one out for him walking towards him. if anybody drinks from one of those you get to heal 1d4 yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've um, pretty much took half but, of it. But like, you'll be at a mild disadvantage for any uh, perception checks. Uh, that's okay fair. That's fair. I mean, you don't have right. to drink my... I'm healing one off of that. Also, so. as I'm handing them, I also kind of mutter and I point to the label, which is a beer in a pail. And I go, it's a pail. <laughs> 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 I'm kind of laughing to myself. I heal three. I heal three as well. Uh, I am still in shock. I have no idea what just came over my body, so I'm pretty much out for the count, just trying to recover right now. I'm also so. muttering their tw their twist offs. Their twist offs. <laughs> 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 this this gentleman is wrapped in vines. Uh huh. Okay. And he is looking up at you all with utter terror. You cannot see his face because he is wearing a, a basically his cloak is also a scarf that sort of encircles everything except for his eyes, which are just very very wide and very very frightened. Hold up. Uh, Ron did not take the beer because he knew somebody who drank too much beer. So he gave his other beer to um, Glenn. So I'm two in. Yeah. All right. I double I double fist it because I'm a All rock right. So you're going to be at full disadvantage for any perception stuff for the rest of the But session. I did get two more health. All right. All right. Well, if nobody else knew it, I, I walk right up to the gentleman and I hold a beer out. I go, you, you've always put a hell of a fight. And I reach the beer out to him. I go, my name's uh, Daryl Wilson. And he like tries to reach at it, <laughs> but he is constrained by the vine. So he's like, I, I look over at Henry. I'm like, yeah, you, you did this. He's just, I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I pull the hatchet out <laughs> and I raise it above my head. And I go, you promise not to hurt us if I let you out? Uh-huh. Yep. What, yep. You, what, are you what the doing? fuck? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Henry uh, recovers himself just enough to say, uh, uh, sir, before you do that, maybe we should bind him with this rope. I have some rope in the minivan. It's a good idea. I hurry over to the minivan and get some rope, and then uh, I use my my skills I learned from the scouts to hog tie the guy. All right. Cool. While he's doing that, I run over and I take two more pieces of my secret stash, and I do meditation exercises. For roll about, stealth again. Okay. Everybody roll. This, perception. this should be advantage. I mean, they're like nobody's near the minivan, right? No, no, you get advantage on it. Okay. Perception is that what we're rolling? Yeah, you're rolling perception. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I can go much lower than that. I got fifteen. Seventeen plus stealth. Okay, so you're fine. Okay. Uh, Twenty-one. Ooh, okay. okay. Well, minus, what did I get for drinking the beer? Oh, uh, that's true. Uh, that would be minus three. Oh, okay. So then uh, 20. 18, you still, you still, you still do see it. I'm going to email you. <laughs> I look at Henry with like a little bit of guilt in my eyes. Like, what the fuck is this? I breathe. I am All looking right. forward to this email. Okay. All right, I just um, emailed you. I ask the guy, who are you? Where are we? What's going on? Where are our children? Uh, 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 I, I work for the Lance. What's going? Uh, uh, you, we. I'm not going to bring you in anymore. Obviously, so that's fine. So we're good on that. We're not. We don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> Who's Lance? So, what's the, Who's Lance? The, no, the Lance. The Lance. His. He's. He's called the Lance. You well, know the Lance. But no, we're not. We're not from around here. We don't think. We're. 
What? We've already said too much. Tell us where our children are, you son of a bitch! Uh, da, 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 I mean, they're, 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 they're the Lances, they, they got auctioned off a week ago. Auctioned? Yeah, yeah. A week? <laughs> How much? <laughs> <laughs> We we, we, uh, we, we we came by when we were going to the auction in Fandolin, and we saw the kids, so we took the kids. We didn't have enough room for you, so I thought, oh, we'll come back after we... we, we and then we came back, and you were here, and, and don't kill me. I just do my job. Just doing my job. It was good good work. Daryl Wilson, uh, I, I go ahead and I clean myself up with uh, one of the many uh, cleaning uh, utensils I have, utensils, uh, rags, and everything I have in my car. And I come out, and I feel like a new man, and I'm back to my Daryl Wilson self. Okay, good. Say that again, young gentleman, and I hold my hand out, going, my name's Daryl Wilson. I'm still what do you do with a child? I'm, 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 hold, I'm still this. holding my hand out. <laughs> <laughs> now tell us there again without stuttering what happened to our children. Your children were taken by his eminence, the Lance, to Fandolin, at which point they were put on auction. They were sold, I know not where, the end. <laughs> What's your name, son? My name is Three? Three? I am the third of the Lance's uh, corporals. Well, not corporals, hunters. Is that like a son? I consider myself to be a son in many ways, yes. He, he dotes on me basically more than everyone else in the entire uh, organization with the exception of two other people. I mild- Sounds like a good guy. I mildly, drunkenly kind of stumble up to him. I flick out my Kershaw brand everyday carry pocket knife and I go in a somewhat drunken slur. Give me one good reason not to gut you like a pig right here. Uh, ah, ah, uh, hi. Uh-huh. N- roll intimidation. 12 plus 3, 15. Okay. Tears begin to run down his face. And he's like, no, I, 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 can, I, I, I know where your kids might be. That, that would be great. Okay. So there's always a registry of whoever uh, uh, the Lance sold anybody to that he keeps in his, his home in Fandolin. You could get that. You could let me go. And then you would know where your kids were. You guys, okay, team huddle. Dad Hen- huddle, dad, dad huddle. huddle. Henry O calls for a dad huddle. Guys, what do you guys think? I think we got to keep this guy in the back of our of our van because I think he knows what's going on around here, man. And uh, I, I, don't, do I don't like him letting him go. Either we kill him right now or we bring him along with okay, us. I, I'm against killing him because I think he could be useful. I do worry that he seems like he has a pretty tight bond with this Lance fellow. Uh, and I'm worried that if we let him go, he'll betray so us and set us up. kill him right now. Okay, all okay, right. I, wait, I, 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 he talks as fast as an auctioneer. I think that maybe he knows a good thing or two about business. I think he'd be useful even if he has no information on where our kids are. But we, he probably <laughs> does. And um, <laughs> Yeah, so I think we, at least we could use him for negotiation in the future future that's true he might if he's the third favorite of this lance we might be able to use him for ransom to barter him and parlay him for our children or at least one of them my children (laughs) i called it i called it i put my i put i put my glasses down to hide the tears while i'm up my eyes and i look at the three of them i go guys this is tough but all right i feel like we're a team i think we can do this if we all stick together and i hold i put my arms out for like a group hug what does uh, what do you does he think just, they're tied up and seeing four bloodied vomit covered men just giving themselves a hug? He thinks I am going to die. <laughs> this is going to be the last thing I see is these blood vomit and iodine stained psychopaths embracing each other over the corpses of my friends. Do, do you men care if I quickly call Carol for a second? Oh, yeah, man. I step oh, away. Right. I pull out my Nokia 3310, uh, 3310, which is the cheapest possible. It's now a smartphone. And I also, as I'm pulling it out, I'm muttering that I gave my nice phone to Grant because he said it had better graphics for, for uh, Fortnite. So <laughs> to I be fair, out. it does have better graphics. <laughs> it does <laughs> have better graphics. But this, yeah. one has, <laughs> but this one has Snake, and I want to be snake. clear. I don't want to be clear. His battery life has got to be insane. Better. Right? Way better. 16. So you got a 16, so that means you have 50% battery life okay. left. And in on a Nokia, that means that means a lot. Years. Yeah, that means so basically you have <laughs> two days worth of keeping it on. Talk time, you have basically a, a half hour of talk time, or okay. an hour of talk time. I call Carol, which by the way, every single time I press a button, I kind of hum. I have like a little song when I call my wife. You're going to have to do that right now. Oh, I go. Three, one, zero, five, two, three, ten, two, five, four. I love Carol. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What is that? Oh, there were a few too many numbers there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was my numbers. <laughs> you did nine and then you did like five more. <laughs> I said, I love Carol. <laughs> okay, okay. 
<laughs> oh, hey, hi, hey, honey, how's the how's how's the soccer game going? Oh my God, Carol, um, wh- where are you right now? I'm just uh, I'm I'm at, I'm at I'm at work. Has 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 Grant called you? No, why would he call? What? What's, How, what's going on? When you was, sound so tired. What's going on? When was the last you heard from me? Last you? What are you talking about? When I saw you this morning before you, before you went off for the. All right, somebody, are you at the game? What's no, going on? it's not. I look at the other room in because I I'm I'm crying now. I'm kind of busy right now. So is, is, can we talk later? What's going on? I, I've lost Grant, and you there was what? I've lost Grant, and I don't know. I think I I, I also dented the hood of the car. I'm so sorry. <laughs> And, <laughs> and uh, it's, I don't know where we're at. And, and, uh, oh my I'm, God, I fucking knew you would do something like this one of these days. I, I, I told us, I said, Carol, no, he's a nice man. He's, he's always seemed so prepared. And then you go and you fucking lose a kid. How did you do that? What do you mean lost? Where is he? I, I, I don't know. I was driving. I was, I was straight. I had my hands on 10 and 2, and I knew exactly where I was going. And uh, I looked back, and I told him to stop playing Fortnite. I've been saying he's been playing too much Fortnite. I was trying to talk to him like he oh told me to. Oh, my fucking God. Uh, so you hear her go, like, off mic, basically, and you hear you, see, you hear you hear her say, Darnell, Darnell, we're fucking going. Darnell is, you recognize the name of the head coach who was supposed to have gone to the game today, but it called in sick <laughs> mysteriously. She said, we're fucking going. No, he lost. apparently he lost the fucking kid. I don't no, know. Hey, he really, is that Darnell over there? It doesn't fucking, why don't you focus on finding our okay, kid? But you, can you really quick tell Darnell I did put a set of plays. I, I Did he see my set of plays? I emailed him. She hangs up. <laughs> oh no. She hangs up. I take a big breath and I compose myself. I wipe my tears away. I turn and I look at everybody like with that look of like, just pretend you don't see me feeling things. You know, Daryl. I roll my eyes instantly. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know he saw me. <laughs> we're in a crazy situation, Daryl. This is something we're all going to have to chew on. Uh, you know, I, I, I could be dancing the Charleston right now, but I, I'm really scared. So I think we should all just trust each other and relax. And I know you're going to be okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to let it I out. move my hand and I grab his beer and I just take it away from him. Assuming <laughs> I just take it away from him looking at him and I start drinking it. Hey, Daryl. Yeah. Who's Darnell? <laughs> <laughs> I just keep drinking. Sounds I just like glare. both beers at the same time. Yeah, I just glare at Ron. Okay, uh, well, I can see that tempers are high, tensions are high. We're all coming down off we the We got to figure out what to do with this battle. guy, man. I think we got to go. What was the name of that city again, young sir? Fandolin. Fandolin. I think we've got to take number three here to Fandolin and uh, see if we can parlay him back for our kids. That's my vote. That's Henry's vote. I'm just a guy, though. I, I, I use this opportunity. I step in front of him and I get my, I, I go full coach mode now because of this in <laughs> I just got in mask. I go, damn right. That's a good idea there, son. I slap him on the back. I go, Glenn, why don't you uh, uh, pick that little guy up there and start uh, dragging him on our way? Let's get back in the car, everybody. Three is like, I mean, I'm fine with this plan. You, yeah, give me back. He'll totally barter for me. That's All right. Let's get okay, in the van, cool. everybody. Cool. Sounds like a good plan. Cool. All right. I flick out the knife and I hold it to his throat and I say, you're riding them back with me, Kimosabi. Oh, I nod. No. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. That's a 15 in case you were wondering about the intimidation. 18 no, he intimidation. Is, he is well I hop in well the front in. seat and I go up, bonk, 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 like a three <laughs> little honks so everybody know to get in. And I open the doors with their automatic. Uh, I ask Henry what Kimosabi means. Oh, Kimosabi is a, is a Japanese term, I believe. He also might be referencing um, the Lone Ranger. I believe that's maybe something Tonto says. I'm not quite <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, uh, rocks and geology is more my area. That's more my bailiwick. <laughs> I'm just repeatedly honking. I, th- I think Daryl's ready for us to go. Okay, do y'all get Let's in the Let's all load van? up into the van. Okay. The one thing I would like to say, I, I, we definitely, we have that first aid kit. I'm definitely like, can we... Yes, Heal. so everybody can now uh, basically use uh, your... Yeah, you can short rest now. So you're going to roll 1d8 and you're going to recover a little bit. Short rest. Oh my god, seriously? I got I recover two. I am back to full health. I so, think I'm still at full health. I think you are. Yeah. I don't think I didn't hit you. 1d8 plus two, okay. Oh, seven plus two, so nine. I'm full health. Cool. Hey, Henry. What's up with those vines, Doc? Oh, I was I figured we were gonna have to talk about this at some point. I I was there and then I felt a presence inside me. Henry, roll religion. Okay, I got a 10. You got a 10. Okay, so you hear a, v- a voice coming from inside of you and yet somehow 
outside of you as well. Uh, mm-hmm. It feels like the voice of a powerful entity. You cannot, unfortunately, make out what it says, but you definitely know that some some force just contacted you and may be the one responsible for granting you these powers. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 but uh, let's let's talk about something else. Let's uh, let's I don't I, 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 you know you know it's it's been a long day. Uh, let's talk about something else. I feel like that's pretty much the only thing I want to talk about <laughs> is you had vines that shot out of you. Yeah, well, man. and that weird mist. Mist too. Yeah. That was G- odd. You know, I think maybe I think maybe something's happening to me. And I'm still trying to get my bearings on it. So I really enjoy it if you guys respected my privacy and let me kind of work through what's going on on my own. Do you still have the condoms? I, I sure do. And you know what? Just in case, any, I don't know when the next time crazy shit is just going to spray out of my body. So I'm going to go ahead and put 10 condoms on my fingers uh, for the time being, just to make sure that nothing nothing bad happens. I, you know? I appreciate that. I keep this car pretty clean there, uh, Henry. I appreciate that. I already feel bad about the iodine, so I don't want to make any more messes in here. So uh, you consider me condomed up. Okay. Regarding the I, iodine, I, uh, I don't mind. Oh, God. Ha! Huh. It's been a while since I had a laugh. I, I, I appreciate a good dad joke. So, okay, uh, so so Matt, give yourself 50 XP. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but, but everyone else has to take 1d4 psychic damage. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my God, I just took four damage. <laughs> It's, for, it's just regular damage, huh? Yeah, just regular. It's psychic. I mean, if you have an ability to like withstand psychic damage. Holy shit! I feel like other dads appreciate the dad joke. I think it's I think it's an acquired taste. That's the I, I take two psychic damage okay. from your dad joke. Uh, three, yeah, three. I took I took five on the other one, but that was a wrong dice. But I feel like <laughs> yeah, I did take five. I whisper over to three, who is again uh, being held at knife point. Does there three was, take damage? <laughs> th- oh god, yeah, he does. <laughs> He's wait, like, wait, wait! I would rule that three does not know what iodine is. Oh, that's actually a really good point. Yeah, but no. he do- would know that iodine sounds like I don't mind. Hey, three! So. I noticed you didn't laugh at the joke there, and I, <laughs> and I proceed to explain the joke. <laughs> Holy shit! Pers- did, explaining a dad joke has got to be more damage. Yeah, everybody's got to roll another d4. <laughs> Christ, that's another three three damage. Oh, I also got three. I also got three damage. Thank you. I'm Matt. at two hit points. Oh my god! All right, so three takes uh, takes three damage. Okay, <laughs> incidentally, um, I, I I I whisper to three after this volley of blows. Um, you ever see anything like those vines before, man? No, no. I mean, well, I mean, yes, I suppose there there are certainly whispers of of, of men of magical uh, 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 calculation that are capable of performing ma- f- feats such as. That? Yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? I don't know. What do you want from me? (laughs) Hey, Henry, this guy says you're like some kind of wizard, dude. Far out. I, uh, I, you know, I've, I, I've always read fantasy novels. Maybe when we crossed through that threshold, there was some sort of, yeah, I, 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 um, I don't want to talk about it. I lean over to Ron and I, and I go liberals and I roll my eyes. I nod, and then I smile like I've already told the joke. (laughs) (laughs) So as you come up to the city of Phandalin, any suspicions that you had that you were still in California are completely nuked. This is a town that looks straight out of a storybook. You see bipedal, dragon-esque humanoids walking side by side, with people that look to be human, except they're incredibly beautiful, incredibly young looking, and have pointy ears and are very tall. What are clearly gnomes and dwarves and, and Norwegians. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> a three begins to scooch toward the front of the van and say, The Lance's house should be on the, the southeast corner of the town next to the tavern. I stopped the car. And I look at three. How like, do, wait, how are people reacting to this? Well, that's why I was going to stop the car. I was going to be like, uh, three there. Uh, you'd never seen one of these iron beasts before, had you? No, 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 I hadn't. So, uh, I don't know, everybody. Do you think we should just drive right in there? or? Uh... You know, I will say I was thinking about this in the car, and it strikes me as little as this we know about wherever we are, they know just as little about us, and it might help us to keep it that way. Yeah, says the man with vines for arms. I'm wearing the condoms, Roy! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I am just a little sensitive about the changes that are happening to my body. So I suggest that we uh, pull the minivan over, hide it underneath some uh, branches here, and uh, maybe 
maybe uh, walk the rest of the way. I don't know because I got this guy at knife point, man. And I feel like if we're walking around with a dude tied up at knife point, that's going to draw undue attention to ourselves. Compared you, to a, a, a minivan. Yeah, but you and got, what appears to be a land of dragons and, and wizards and men who shoot trees out of their, their fingers. Uh, yeah, but you got like a bitch and tint on this thing. You know what I mean? Thank you. <laughs> I smile. I'm like, I'm pretty happy that he likes I give my, him a nod. I give him one of them like, I give him a, a bro nod. I'm like, I see what you're doing with your minivan. Perhaps we could disguise the fact that we've got this man shackled up. Like maybe we could use some sort of deception or, you know, arrange some coats or blankets. You know what I have found is even more binding than rope? It's a gentleman's agreement. I put my hand out <laughs> and I put my hand out to three and I go, Daryl Wilson, I know we've already met, but uh, if we untie you, you promise that you'll uh, stay with us. Are you telling the truth when you make this promise? Yes, absolutely. That you basically won't hurt him? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I promise. Can, Can I check if I believe that, that, that I won't hurt you? No, that, 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 you'll, you, that, you'll, that, you'll, that you'll bring us to where, where you said that, because he's taking us to the lands, right? Yeah, no, yeah. I said that I, you'll take us there. Yeah, no, totally. Gentleman's agreement. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Daryl Wilson's word is final. I never break it. Who's Daryl Wilson? That's me. Daryl oh, okay. Wilson. I put my hand out again. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, three. Can we, uh, what do you guys say? I say we untie him and uh, I, treat him like I a Can I do gentleman. like a detect bluff or something? Yes. So you would do a perception check. Oh. I'm going to roll it as well. I'm staring into his eyes. I got a 13. I got a natty one. I got a natty 20. Got a four. Guys, he's <laughs> really honest. <laughs> okay, so only Glenn can tell that he is telling the truth that he will not hurt you or do anything untoward, but you get the very strong sense because of your nat 20 that that is a variable state of affairs, that the second he, if he can find a way to turn this moment to his advantage or fuck you over, he will uh, but only when it becomes very obvious that the, the cards are, are going to turn in his favor anyway. He's very scared of you. But if he finds a way to like very easily maneuver you into a trap or something like that, mm. he'll probably try to take it. But he's also very intimidated. Okay. Um, okay. Knowing that oh, there's got to be a way to disguise that he needs to still lead us. There's uh, four of us, gentlemen. What are we afraid of? This, here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to surround him. I'm going to take off my Harley Davidson leather jacket. Cover the knife with it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, sure. so I'm going to point the knife, poking him in his back, sure. and cover it with the jacket and kind of make sure that he's feeling it. We're going to march him right down to where he said he was going to lead That's us. So, idea. is he disguised as goods? Like auction goods? No, he's just so walking. He's, he's, he's a friend person. walking with us. Oh, a friend. A friend. Yeah, he's a just friend. a cold friend. A f- a the coat a- is over him, and the knife is underneath the Which coat. Which is also over his red cloak. Yes. Okay. Cold friends. All right. <laughs> I, I, I take my pocket knife out and I cut the rope and I also hand him that beer that he couldn't grab before. I go, gentlemen's agreement. G- cheers. Cheers. And I pop he, it open for him. It's a twist off. Yeah. I pop it open he for tw- him. He takes a drink and he is healed back for the psychic damage that you <laughs> in- inflicted upon him. <laughs> by he, how's, that, that, he, how's that bad boy taste? Uh, it's fine. It's not the best I've had. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm very hurt by this. <laughs> <laughs> you, you take 1d6. Yeah, I, was about say, I would like to take psychic damage. Yeah, actually. yeah you take 1d6. Okay, it's a two. <laughs> <laughs> I suggest we venture forth, but maintain our caution. Yes. For who knows what we shall find in these strange lands. And really quick, I'm going to grab the rest of it from him. So I'm going to take a swig as well because I'm super low on health and I could use the hit. I'm going to heal back for four, baby. And I'm getting a little Not bit buzzed, enough. which to be fair for, for Glenn Close, right in the pocket, baby. Okay. How'd that, how'd that taste there, Glenn? Loved it, man. See, this is, this is a man. knows beer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so did you hide the van? or Yes. Okay. I would say that we started putting branches and stuff all around really, it. Really? In the middle of the town, huh? No, no outside, the town. Outside, 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 outside the town. You outside can see the from town. a distance the people walking that hadn't seen you. So three leads you past a market where people are hurried. They're just yelling in languages you've never heard before that don't seem to be any earth languages. Some of them are speaking what is definitely English, um, but a lot of other people seem to be saying things that are just guttural noises and growls and stuff like that. You see creatures unlike any you've ever seen before, unless you've seen literally any fantasy movie in ever. Um, <laughs> and uh, this is yeah. some Lord of the Rings shit right here, y'all. Yeah. So yes, at, at the end of this uh, this lane, sort of in its own cul-de-sac, is one house at the end of an alley. Um, and three looks at you guys and says, "This is the Lance's house." So I can go now. I'm good. We're bartering. No, we're no. bartering you. Yeah. Remember. And what exactly is you know now? Who exactly is this Lance? He 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 generally is known as one of the best cultivators of non-voluntary work in this part of the <laughs> continent. You're using a lot of elitist language. Yeah, that's how I got to be number three. 
So he lives in this Hans Christian Andersen house, and he's a, a child abducting slave peddler. That's an extremely offensive way to put what my master does. Mm, I, I do well, not I have to say, sir, I am extremely offended that he's sold my children into <laughs> slavery. Well, yeah, well, I agree to disagree, but that's, so, uh, I feel like they're probably more useful. I think you're going to, no offense to you, but I feel like you're just going to stay with us. You know, a man doesn't leave a job halfway done. That's what my father always told me. So I think you're going to come along with us and meet the Lance and help okay. us out here. All right. You're the ones with the metal beast so yeah sure cool all right um what do you boys say say we should uh walk on in there i think maybe we should use some stealth and cunning to scout out the situation are there any windows yes so there are two windows in the front uh with curtains drawn in front of them the alleyway seems to prevent you from going around either side of it almost like it's just this like cork that's like in the fucking bottleneck um but you could uh, try to get on the roof and see if there's a, a a way in through there there seems to be a chimney uh, I'd first, I'd like to sneak around and peer through one of the windows. Okay. So basically the windows are closed, mm -hmm. uh, but they have latches on the inside and the outside. So you could try to unlatch it if you do a stealth check to do it quietly. So they're not glass. They're like wood. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll go ahead and try to do a stealth check. Huzzah. Uh, I get a 16. Ooh. Okay. So you succeed and you quietly open the window and part the curtain and inside you see that the uh, house is actually a lot bigger than you thought, not like a TARDIS, but it's just very long. Like the alley probably went on for another like 30, 40 yards, or no, that's what's like a football field, <laughs> another like 30, 40 feet. And his house is just this very long, almost like train car-esque structure. There doesn't seem to be anybody in the front room. There's a hallway going down to a bunch of smaller rooms off to the side on either end, almost like a, kind of looks like a prison cell. Hey, Henry, what do you see in there, buddy? I relay... Uh, what our kind DM just told me to them. And I say, yeah. I don't see anyone in there. I think rather than make our presence known, we should just go ahead and sneak on in and uh, see what we can see. Perhaps our children are still in one of those. There's sort of, sort of offshoot rooms. It seems like maybe quarters for purloined persons. Yeah, I ask three because he mentioned that there was like a log, right? Some sort of log book mm -hmm. that yes. we were going for. Where would that log book be? It would almost certainly be in Lance's office. Where's that? Uh, at the back. Gentlemen, why, why are we sneaking around here? I mean, we may disagree with uh, uh, Lance's business practices, but, you know, this is uh, you of all people, I feel like would have been a, a accepting of other cultures, uh, you know, and I feel like <laughs> I feel like we should go talk uh, like a gentleman here and talk like a businessman. So I start walking towards the front door. <laughs> Okay, I, I kind of let loose a little bit on on Daryl here for a second. Okay. I, uh, Henry, Henry Oaks, fragile temper cracks for a minute and they say listen up you big alpha jock piece of shit bozo <laughs> that's our fucking kids we're trying to get back so fucking cool it with your fucking dick swaggering nonsense i'm not having none of it we were gonna be cool and we were gonna be calm and we were gonna fucking get our kids back and then we can worry about your fucking mo my dad's words honor dick bullshit mister so fucking cool it so Sarah roll Wilson roll, is roll stealth with disadvantage because you just yelled this after <laughs> opening a window <laughs> I've got a 12. Uh, you got to roll again and take the worst. Oh, shit. Well, that's not good. What is that? Uh, 18. Oh, okay. okay so, so 12. Okay. So you don't, you don't notice any change. You hear the echo sort of go through the alley, and then it dissipates. Daryl uh, Wilson stares at, at Henry and just shakes his head, and just I knock on the door. <laughs> okay, <laughs> He's right. a shit. I got three with me, by the way. Yes, three's right yeah, next I to you. I go, Daryl Wilson here. I knock on the door. Okay. So, Will, are you still looking through the, the window? Yes, and I'm praying and cursing Daryl's name. Is any of you going to attempt to stop uh, Daryl from knocking? No. Physically. Uh, I, he, I was really scared of him after I went on my tirade, so I was just kind of <laughs> waiting to see what he would do, so I didn't get I just, a chance to look, stop him. My reasoning here is I think one way or the other, they're going to catch us, and I feel like we're going to put ourselves in a better standing if it's like, hey, hello, gentlemen. You have our children. We would prefer to have them back as opposed to being caught, like, trying to steal them. So I knock as a straightforward gentleman that I am. Okay, so before he does that, are you saying you sneak in, Ron? I just open the door. So, you just open, so you're knocking on an open door. I say, I, you knock, I think, and then you I open the I door knock, for and I him. Sit there, I sit there waiting, and the door just swings open. I look over, and I see Ron opening the door. I go, that's not the purpose of knocking. <laughs> I didn't think he'd already knocked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... It was going to be just Will that saw this first, but now that the door is open, everyone sees it. So they see a door at the very end of the hallway open up and a man who uh, basically looks very tall and gaunt and human, but a bit sort of older, walk toward the door with a massive like crossbow that he's holding with both hands, just holding it in front of him. And he says, what the hell do you want? 
Hi, I'm Daryl Wilson. I take a step forward. I put my hand out. You have five seconds to step back and let my son go. Oh, uh, three here uh, is not under any distress whatsoever. He actually led us over here. To, uh, he said that you he could help us with a little business arrangement. Uh, that being that you have our children, and I pull my axe out. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Three immediately panics and starts running. Well, toward hold on, him. remember I have wait, him. Wait. I have him by oh, the you knife. Got, uh, uh, I so got you, him with the knife. So you like he begins to run toward it and you sort of pull and pull him I'm back. Holding and, like, him back. I, like, I didn't like pull my axe out. Like, right, like I just have my axe ready. <laughs> no, 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 you can't just take that back. <laughs> no, you no, said you God. pulled the axe out. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, careful yeah, with your words. Matt. You're holding the axe. <laughs> yes, I'm holding I want to de-escalate. Okay, well, well I, w- I say. Three didn't tell me you look so much like Clint Eastwood. I've seen all of these movies <laughs> several times. Gran Torino is excellent and not racist at all. <laughs> three, three looks at you and just what? And then looks back at the Lance and says, "They killed two and four. They want their kids that we sold. I told them that maybe you would show them the the ledger. Maybe is that a thing that makes sense?" And the Lance closes his eyes for a second and lowers the crossbow, and he says, well, I guess that makes you the new two. No. No. Zero. And he raises the crossbow <gasps> and fires it. And... Ooh, he fucking bullseyes three right in the fucking throat. Um, three! <laughs> three falls to the ground, blood streaming from his throat. I look at him and go, that's nothing compared to what we did to the other two kids. <laughs> <laughs> Is my Harley Davidson jacket unhurt? Ooh, no, he it, it definitely punctured through the back. Oh, man. There's a hole in it. Oh, man. Um, so Psychic damage. <laughs> he, his crossbow seems to auto-reload. And oh, uh, he says, so just so you know, that's how I deal with people that do work for me. So if you've come to barter, know that that is the extent of my patience currently today. Oh, you really remind me of Clint Eastwood. <laughs> 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 to clarify, Will, are you at the window still? Um, y- you know, uh, no, I think I went in. I went in with the party. Okay, you yeah. went with the party. Okay. Well, I thought the door was just open and we're standing outside. You're currently standing in the threshold. I'm mean, going to step forward in. with my hands out. Oh, saying, I see, yeah. I see. Are, you guys, are you guys in the house Yeah, now? I think we're like a step in. Okay, so you're a step in. I, so, I stepped in. I won't say what sure. you guys did. So he says, here is the situation you currently find yourselves in. One of three things is about to happen. One, I'm going to call the rest of my family in here to kill you. Two... We're going to come to some sort of agreement, which is more beneficial to me than it is to you because you've wasted my time, killed several of my children, and interrupted my dinner. Or three, you are going to leave. I will wait an hour and then call the city watch to come after you and kill you. Those are your choices. Can you repeat the choices? <laughs> I'm very, I, I'm just, I got to be honest, I'm very distracted by the fact that you just killed your son. Uh, yeah. So, so number one was we fight and you kill us. Yes. Number two was we make a bad deal with you. Yes. And number three was uh, that we run away and you call the cops. Um, I'm just spitballing. Is there a, is there a chance that we could get a look at that ledger and find our kids? Is that still on the table? If you want a look at the ledger, I will permit you a look at the ledger. Uh, what would that deal look like, uh, Sir Lance? You would have to offer me something that I found impressive enough to put my business relationships in jeopardy because one generally does not state the outcome of a deal after it's been made. That's team huddle, team huddle. Dad huddle, dad huddle. Okay, 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 okay. Henry Oak's having a brainwave. Okay. Like I said earlier, they don't know where we're from. What if we roll this like a, like a, you guys, do, you don't know who you just fucked with. We're foreign oh, yeah. emissaries from the kingdom of, of, uh, we're from West Rock. West Rock. We're from West Rock. We're emissaries from West Rock to came to the, what's the name of the town? Fandolin. We came to Fandolin. <laughs> we were coming to Fandolin on a mission for our kingdom. And if he doesn't return our kids, it could be all out war. And the kingdom of West Rock will, will slay his entire family and burn his business to the ground. Maybe something like that. Maybe I'm overplaying and it a little king, bit. And our king, St. Demas. St. Saint, Saint Demas. St. Demas. King of West Rock. <laughs> Sounds a lot like the West Rock HOA, but, you know, take it away, guys. <laughs> And then maybe we could use that as a sort of intimidation, a way to advance our parlay. But maybe, maybe, and again, I'm just having another brainwave here. Maybe we have an artifact from West Rock that is like very valuable uh, that, you know, would be, you know, uh, like a, like a, like a symbol that he could show when our army comes through and then we would pass him over and he would have uh, a, st- oh, we're a war party. We're a scouts for a war party from West Rock. And if he has that symbol, when our army comes in, we will, we'll, someone else should do the persuading. Cause I feel like I'm doing a bad job, but. 
but like you know, he'll be able I to dig- show it to them and then be a, a a favorite status when we conquer this land. I think I dig where you're going, man. I think I got this. Um, it's because oh. I have I have pretty strong performance and persuasion. Yeah, so this would be a persuasion check. So what would, what is the object? I was going to suggest I do have a spare soccer jersey in my Jansport <laughs> that has the doodler on the back. So we could be like, this is a uniform of our people. And you know, when our army comes, you could, you could use it for safety. I think your child, by the way, drew that. The doodler. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah Sparrow drew the doodler. Uh, no, no offense there, uh, Henry, but th- that doodler looks like shit. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to, be terrified. I mean, do you see what just happened? He just freaking crossbowed his kid through the face, and that thing looks like a five-legged drawing. I, I, okay, I feel like that's you know you're being pretty aggro on me right now. I, I know it kind of flew off the handle at you here, Daryl. But I'm just saying. I just I don't know why we got to bring my kid's drawing ability into the conversation. You know what? I miss him terribly. Even I'm I'm barely keeping it together right now, just trying not to think about him. So you know, a maybe- tear goes down my eye, and I go, "You're right. I'm sorry, man. It's been a tough day for both of us." And I pat <laughs> it on the back, and I look over. I say, "Do you have a guitar with you, Glenn?" I do. I got my Taylor right or Fender or Gibson right here, man. I think I think I like where Henry's going there. I think your music should be kind of uh, one of the gifts that we were going to bring to this new kingdom. Wait, are we saying we're a war party? Or are we saying that we're because I, th- I, th- I think a four person hey, Henry? I love where your brain's at for a war party. Do you know what I mean? Like we're like we're scouts. And <laughs> I feel like I'm watching a non-canon episode of Story Break. <laughs> All right, well then, uh, why I don't I don't want to railroad our. I our, tune up my guitar. <laughs> I just I just don't feel like this is a music kind of guy. Where I just don't feel like this guy pumps a lot of tune skis. I go ahead and I turn and I puff my chest out and I stand up as tall as I possibly can. What's your What's your persuasion? My intimidation is plus one and my persuasion is minus one. Okay, Mine so my persuasion performance is plus five. I think we should let him. do Yeah, the yeah. No, I, I I snap to to Freddie who's going to start playing. I give you a wink, like play something fucking badass. Uh, I start ripping into a blistering cover of uh, 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 of Wonderwall. <laughs> <laughs> of Wonderwall. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and as I'm doing it, I'm basically, I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling him, look, man, I, I, I step forward in the group and I say, look, man, we're a bunch of traveling emissaries from the land of... I go, what are you doing? <laughs> we were about to say we're a war party. <laughs> <laughs> I've clearly not heard the. the I hold. The, I hold. Daryl, put my mouth over Daryl's mouth. You put my, your mouth over Daryl's mouth. My hand. No, no, he can't take it back. You can't, can't take, take it back. back. My eyes can't take it back. I, feel I something. silence his dumb ass with a kiss. I find something. <laughs> something tingles deep down inside of me, and I, I feel love for the first time in a long time when he puts his mouth on mine. I. I t- <laughs> As Glenn holds his guitar, I turn to the other dads and I said. Hey, maybe, just maybe, he's going to be the one that saves us. Without missing a beat, I say, a group of uh, peaceful, uh, loving uh, warriors uh, from... He he holds that hand and says, it's clear you were trying to make something up right there. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let me tell you. I was going to hear you out. But then one of you kissed the other and sort of whatever you were about to say kind of stopped making a lot of sense. It was hot, though, right? So we're just going to go ahead and get it down to brass tacks. I will give you a look at this book in exchange for, um, I don't know, what do you have? I grab, I, I grab his Nokia phone and load up Snake. Roll Persuasion. 11. He looks at it. Just give it a shot, man. How do I? What is this? So this is like you're a snake. And you got to use these little buttons here and you got to eat these, uh, these fruit. Can I assist his persuasion? Is that like a thing? If, yeah, if you, if you can come up with like an in-character like way to like back him up, then yeah, you can, you can roll in. In it. the land that we come from, this is the game of kings. Only the wisest and most cunning of people can, are, are successful playing. You know, I don't even think you're smart enough to play Snake. Ooh, okay, roll persuasion. God, with the natural ones, come on! <laughs> <laughs> so, so he looks at you and then looks back at Glenn and goes, "So this is a this is a baby game for babies." That's what that's I what was going to persuade, this. but he Henry, I'm like, yeah, you know, Snake does suck. <laughs> <laughs> Snake's not a good game at all. Ron, you, you any help here? Snakes are natural predators. We had to put down our purebred Dotson because he got bit by a snake. <laughs> this is a game replicating that exact same experience. Uh, it will make you so strong and powerful. It'll make me cry about my dots. <laughs> Roll persuasion. 
19. Ooh. I guess he must have had a so, dog. His so, name was Dottie. Yeah, the so Dotson. The, the crossbow lowers a little bit in his hands. And he says, a dachshund, what manner of beast is that? It sure ain't a snake, partner. I, 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 I chime in. It's, the, it's a dog. Oh. It's a family member. He looks forlornly behind you, and you can see framed uh, <laughs> oh, no. next to the door a picture of him, many people in red cloaks, and then a very large, very furry looking dog uh, that he is riding like like fucking Falcor from 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 <laughs> never ending story. What's the what's the pup's name there, pal? His name. His name was one. <laughs> <gasps> I pull out. I pull out my wallet. I pull out my wallet and I open up to my pictures and I, I, I look at the one of Carol really quick and I, I sigh and I flip it over and I got a picture of, of me and Grant getting our puppy, mm-hmm. Lincoln, and I hold it up to him. I go, this little buddy is Lincoln. The guy next to him, my son's name's Grant. I've met him. Want to tell us where he is by any chance? Where is Lincoln? Grant lost him. <laughs> Your son lost Lincoln? Did. Your son sounds like an irresponsible sack of shit. Go, to t- take such a creature of love and dignity and then lose it as one would a bauble? I. I ev- He's, that's why we're looking for him evoke, to punish him. I evoke rage. <laughs> What? And I'm right next to him, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he just he just called my son a piece of shit. I'm literally right next to him. All right. So what happens when you rage? <laughs> I mean, you can tell me. I'm I'm gonna axe this guy unless <laughs> like we're just going to. So I mean, wait, he's basically seeing you get angry. All yeah. he's doing is seeing you get angry. Yeah. I wait. You go. I go. I, I stop Daryl with another kiss. <laughs> 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 I can sense he's blowing it. <laughs> and I take that kiss, and I go, "Thank you, my." Number one, and I look at him. I look back. He's like, "You're right. Grant is a piece of shit, and that's why I need him back so I can punish him correctly for losing Lincoln." Fair, fair. I will tell you where Grant is. Excellent. Only Grant, though. Well, uh, so that you that's may find him. With, uh, fine with me. Is that fine with you? Number one. <laughs> and I look at Henry. <laughs> <laughs> You know what would really punish Grant would be if we killed all of Grant's friends in front of him. All right, why don't you roll persuasion? That's pretty good. <laughs> all right, um, what did I get? I got a 10 plus, uh, tell me, uh, 11. <laughs> he just, sorry, he doesn't believe. No! And I, and I look at him, I go, I know he doesn't seem very persuasive. And then I slap, <laughs> I slap Henry on the butt. I go, but seriously, in the same way that we murdered your two children and drank their blood, we will murder Grant's friends in front of him before we eat his skin. Just so you know, they weren't my like birth children, but like, that's oh, I'm I know. not that upset. Oh, okay. I wish they were, though. The blood would have been extra. Okay, okay, okay. okay. That's, okay. that's kind okay. of weird. <laughs> Both of us are like, Sorry. like, okay, all right, okay, okay. This one, Jesus. <laughs> all right, all right. In exchange for a Nokia phone and the So promise, you did like Snake. It's pretty fun, right? I mean, it looks kind of neat, yeah. <laughs> In exchange for the Nokia phone and a promise that you will kill Grant upon finding him. <laughs> Well, his friends or him. No, just Grant. I didn't believe oh, that you actually wanted oh, to know see, about I the see. friends. Oh, I will God. tell you where the Grant is. I'm in. I mean, if you guys are. I, I put my, I cross my fingers. <laughs> I put them behind my back. And I go, Daryl Wilson always keeps his word. <laughs> my hand out <laughs> to shake his hand. Make a dexterity check. Uh, 14. Okay. So as you put out your hand to shake it, he takes out a slip of paper from his robe, sort of puts it under your hand, and then before you can pull away, grabs your hand with the hand that has the paper in it, drops the crossbow, oh, no. takes out a dagger, and cuts your hand, and you bleed onto the paper. Take 1d4 of damage. Ooh. Actually, just take 1 damage. Just take 1 damage. We only got 10 health. <laughs> yeah, it's only, it's only 1 damage. And you bleed onto the paper. The blood is absorbed within it, the blood begins to coagulate and swirl around, becoming like ink uh, that begins to form a picture, and it forms a picture of Grant's face. And 
<laughs> uh, uh, I'm trying to find the least morbid way of describing <laughs> this, but it, it shows Grant's face with like very hollow looking eyes and a face of like agony. And he says, uh, the pact is made. Your son will die when you meet him. <laughs> you make good, good. That's what we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I squeeze Henry's hand, mm-hmm. like because I can't speak. Like I'm hold, I'm doing everything I can to not hold back tears. And I'm just happy that he spoke, and I just <laughs> hold his hand and I squeeze it. Uh, should Should you fail to do so, definitely won't. <laughs> <laughs> All of your lives, because I have treated you as a as a group. You seem to speak for them as the alpha. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All of your lives will be forfeit. Will end irreversibly. We know what that means. Okay. Just making sure oh, shit, you may you dog. may you may keep this receipt of the pack that we have made, and he hands you the picture. I take out my wallet, which I, is where I keep all my receipts, <laughs> alphabetized, <laughs> and I look at it, and I and I fold it up, and I slip it in. Is this one of those freaky Harry Potter receipts where the thing is always moving? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. He's like constantly kind of screaming in horror. As a businessman, so, I asked to expense it. <laughs> so just very quietly from uh, Daryl's wallet, we're just going to constantly hear just quiet screaming. <laughs> Pretty well, much. <laughs> it's, it's like ah, it's like Doppler effect, like screaming. It's yeah, like yeah. Well, it's covered away. up. It's muffled by yeah, his wallet. I, I have a question. <laughs> Does... If we meet Grant, like the rest of us, uh-huh. don't does, ask him now. Does that still mean that uh, Grant dies? Like, who does the spell apply to? If any of us meet Grant, the the spell applies to you as a group. You have all entered oh, into a group contract. Okay. If any one of you should meet Grant and okay. not kill him within twenty four hours of confirming that it is Grant, okay, and so just to clarify, like, um, I mean, because we're definitely gonna do it. Um, <laughs> it's not just like that. Like, we have to kill. Like, is it the way I said, which was pretty violent? <laughs> Like is this like is this like a horse like you've played the game horse like is this just like shoot it from the spot where the other person did or like or like spin around you know corkscrew sore shot you gotta do the same thing I've played many games on horses I, okay. I, none of them have evolved corkscrews I'll just I will say that because you said specifically that that is what you would do mm-hmm. that is what you have to do mm-hmm. 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 yikes all right <laughs> okay so what again did you say you would do I I, I think it was something about uh, slowly. It- Letting him live a natural life <laughs> over the course of another 60, 70, 80 years. I, I have forgotten what I what I said, it but involved, it doesn't matter uh, because the contract remembers. It involves skin oh. and eating. <laughs> yes, you were gonna you were gonna eat his skin. Oh, delightful. Mm, yes. Um, um, I'm like <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's that's perfect. Uh, right, can we have a look at that uh that uh, ledger? I did say I would show you the ledger. I did verbally say did. I would show you the ledger. You did. Yeah. Uh, so he goes back into his room. He takes, uh, comes out with a big old book, opens it to the last most recent page, hefts it up, and then shows you and <laughs> puts his hand over the other names. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can see. Uh, I try to, I try to like nudge his hand. All right. Do a dexterity check. That's a 19. Ooh, okay. So here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to write down the information that you see, and I'm going to flash it to you really quickly, and then I'm going to flash it back. I'm going to show it to you for exactly till the count, till, till two apple. One apple, two apple. I'm going to show it to you on my laptop, and then I'm going to flash it back. All right. Uh, Henry is going to note that at the moment, he is going to draw out his phone. Ooh, okay. And <laughs> all right. When all right. he sees Daryl making this play, he goes to take a picture of the list. Okay. To All try right. to get everyone's thing. So I'm going to stand behind Matt with my phone at the ready to yep. try to get a photo of this. Okay. So what's happening now is All Anthony right. is putting, is preparing his Surface Book. I have Matt and Will to my right. I'm leaned in here. incredibly, like, like so intent. I, I just Will has his phone up. My child's skin. All right. Okay. I'm going to give you a three count. I'm going to show it to you for two Apple. Then I'm going to turn it back around. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. One Apple, two Apple. Will, did you get the photo? <laughs> okay, I'm going to pass around the photo that I got so that you guys can see how hard I nailed this information. <laughs> God damn it. For those playing at home, it is a blurry picture of what could we're be a posting, laptop we're, screen. Oh, we're yeah. posting this. Yeah. <laughs> I go, oh, sorry. I s- Holy there, been shit, drinking a that's little bit. the best you got? <laughs> how the f- This is so bad. Oh, anyways, uh, where is... Uh, oh, sorry about that. Hand slip there. So where's uh, Grant? 
you are headed to the dwarven colony of Meadowshade. Sounds kind of nice. <laughs> so, uh, where, where do you see there, Glenn? So I think I kind of fucked up. Because oh, I no. saw that Glenn was in Meadowshade, and I thought that was maybe my kid. You know, I'm a, I gotta admit, a little blurry in terms of the vision, because I've been down in so many brewskis on the way in. So uh, I can reconfirm that Grant is also in Meadowshade. I saw, <laughs> I, saw, I saw a town named Rockport. Rockport? Rockport. And I think I saw, but now I'm wondering if I just saw Meadowshed because I thought I saw Watershed, but <laughs> that like might Rockport. just be... Rockport. Sorry, boys. I did. I did my best, but we got one more. We got Rockport did you for guys sure. See anything? Ron, did you see anything? I was looking the other way. <laughs> 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 Not on purpose. I just well, uh, thinking about your missing child made me think about my missing stepchild. <laughs> I wistfully turned away. I go. Uh, Thank you so much, there, uh, Lance. That's quite fair. I'm really excited to eat my child skin. Um, <laughs> I hope you enjoy that game of snake. Uh, oh, I will. Yeah. As he's talking to the Lance, mm-hmm. I'm going to do a sleight of hand to try to rip that page out of that book. Okay. What the fuck are you doing? Hey, man, it's my kids. It's our kids in there. If any of you have good sleight of hand and are sneaky dudes. Can that- I see what he's doing? Uh, yeah. It depends on the quality of my sleight of hand no, roll. I, I, that's true. Go, you roll first. Roll first. Okay. Um, I have a plus two to sleight of hand. <laughs> Natural fucking 20. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Are I, you fucking kidding I me? I want, can I, can I just say, the moment he's doing it though, I kiss <laughs> the Lance. Oh my God. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> this is how we do greetings yeah, in how we West Rock. I, I kiss him. I go, thank you, as I'm kissing him. Like a full lip. <laughs> yes. He doesn't notice at all. He's so busy getting deep tongued. <laughs> 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 that the sound, the sound of Daryl's slobbering jaw it overwhelms the sound of the paper getting ripped out of his ledger. And you can see that Lark and Sparrow are in Neverwinter. Nicholas is in Waterdeep. Terry Jr. is in Rockport, and Grant Wilson is in Meadowshade. I'm thinking about Henry when I kiss the Lance. <laughs> 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 All right. Hey, hey, dads, do we think that uh, Daryl's handshake or his kiss is more trustworthy? <laughs> what is the truer... <laughs> I explained to him hastily that this is uh, the manner of greeting and uh, 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 of appreciation of uh, our people. That much is obvious. Yeah. <laughs> I think he understood. Given, given purely how many times you've done it in these 70 seconds you've been in my home. <laughs> as we as we exit, we're leaving, right? We're leaving town, heading back to the car. Mm-hmm. I go, everybody, uh, real quick, right before we get to the van, I, say, I just want to say uh, I was a team effort out there. And uh, Henry, I want to give you a uh, most improved... <laughs> Award. Yes, I think he did a really great job. And if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't know where where our kids are. So let's give uh, let's give Henry a little round of applause. Give a oh, light. thanks everybody. Uh, sorry, I introduced the kissing thing as uh, something we might have to maintain now as part of our cover. <laughs> it's uh, okay. I think as long as we don't meet the Lance again. <laughs> uh, you saw the list. Where are we going first, fellas? Well, I, I would imagine the next thing we should do is gather some intel in town about these different places so we know a little bit more about where we're going so we can make what we in the geology business call a rock-solid decision. God. All right, yeah. so everybody except for Will take one D4 psychic ah, damage. Jesus Christ, I can't believe this. Will gets 100 XP. Dungeons and Daddies consists of Anthony Birch, Matt Arnold, Will Campos, Beth May, and myself, Freddie Wong. Theme song by Maxton Waller. You can follow us on Twitter at Dungeons and Dads, and our Facebook group is at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dads. Hey, so this is a bit of an exciting time for us because we are bringing in a new podcast into the world. Not that the world needs more podcasts, but I mean, this is an idea that we've been kicking around for a long time and that we're really excited about, and we're not sure how people are going to like it. I mean, if people will like it, even. So if you've enjoyed the show, please help this 
baby fledgling child of a podcast out of its nest by leaving us a review on iTunes, tweeting it out. Yeah, get it? Nest tweeting, right? That's, that's pretty good, right? Uh, telling a friend, please help us out by sharing the show with folks who might also dig our chill vibes. And do let us know what you thought on our Twitter. Uh, I guarantee you that we are so thirsty for external validation that we'll be refreshing the hell out of that feed. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I'm slicing and dicing the next one as we speak, and that's going to be out February 5th. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you then. There was a time when you